Uh, this is going to be chapter six mapping. Um, I was looking forward to uh, a couple of our, our mapping uh, gurus, um, Gustavo and Kent. Um, I don't know if they'll be joining us or not. Uh, and if I'm missing those individuals, uh, please let me apologize beforehand. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share screens if that's okay with the team. Does anybody have any questions or comments before we begin? Any tabled items from last discussion or? I did want to apologize. I think I created a snafu on the ggplot repository. Uh, John was able to get it resolved. Uh, Lydia, you had actually uh, made the initial comment uh, why the book down was not able to render properly. And I think it, I created a whole bunch of disruption. Uh, we've got it resolved and uh, the book down is now going to build for us. Um, I will be pushing these slides up to the repository, uh, get a pull request in, and uh, everyone else will be able to benefit them, uh, benefit from them as well. So, all right, so let's go ahead and share screens, and let's get this rocking. Uh, before we really begin, I just want to uh, highlight uh, there is a point where I'm going to change different tabs of my browser. Um, I've already staged some media that I would like to reinforce with this presentation. Um, if you would like the links of what I'm sharing, I'm more than happy to send them. Uh, otherwise, they're, they're, uh, if they're not already cited, um, they are available. Um, Google Earth is what I'm laughing about. Um, I just had to turn up some features uh, to make this a little easier for me to comprehend. And I hope that it will help the uh, cohort as well. But again, team, this is going to be chapter six. We're going to be talking about maps. And ggplot2 as a service doesn't directly interface with maps, but there are other geomes within ggplot uh, with uh, uh, special features and also uh, just a point geome uh, that we'll display here in a moment. So the learning objectives for this chapter, we're going to talk about plotting simple maps using Geom Polygon. We have accessed this in previous uh, graphical objects, uh, but it's going to uh, allow us to render uh, a very simple map uh, just briefly to show how exactly all of these latitude and longitude coordinates uh, work in a uh, mapping feature. The second heavier part of this entire uh, chapter is going to be dedicated to uh, simple features. Now, the SF package or uh, uh, simple features, I'm gonna call them special. I know I'm gonna call them special features. Simple features are going to be polygons within a particular data set. And so we're gonna, we're gonna talk about how they were rendered and how the uh, simple features package uh, utilizes these um, internal nested uh, content. And then third is we're going to work with map projections and underlying uh, special features data structure. Uh, this one was a really interesting chapter because if you start to deal with polygons inside polygons uh, or the negative, meaning that there's a hole in your polygon, you have to take that into consideration. Um, in this example, everything was uh, written for the Australia map, um, but there are areas within the other world, different polygons that probably have this uh, executed as well. And then the fourth section is going to be using uh, raster drawings. Now, raster is, if you're not familiar with the term, it's uh, post-network graphics, bitmaps, uh, TIFFs. Um, they, are, they are RGB values that paint on a screen. That's the common JPEG type picture. There's this particular feature within that raster uh, called a geo TIFF. And I don't have a good example of it. Um, and when we get to this particular section, I started to stumble uh, because the package that was uh, called upon and everything that supports this particular chapter started to, to uh, uh, cascade into pieces. Um, I will do my best to get those packages up and running and uh, finish this slide deck with that last particular point. I honestly don't believe we're gonna get there. Uh, so I'm not trying to uh, give a pre, uh, uh, pre-warning so that if we do end up uh, at that stage, I may just switch over and start using the book instead. Okay. Plotting geospatial data is a common visual ta uh, visualization task. The process may require specialized tools. You can decompose the problem into two different paths. The first is using one data source to draw a map. Um, this is going to be our common uh, GIS database or, or uh, GIS data frame and then project it using ggplot. 
adding additional metadata from another information source to the map, uh, providing us a more common with relation to geographic areas. One of my favorite, favorite uh, topics in relation to mapping using R is uh, the Electoral College in the United States. Um, in Australia, we're going to use a similar uh, electoral system within the various states of Australia and then paint different areas of, of where that shows up. I've always been fascinated uh, during our election season whenever we start to project um, who's going to vote for what uh, particular party and then uh, using these mapping features. Okay. Now, before I really start or move past this slide, I do want to try to insert into long-term memory uh, for our entire cohort. We need to make sure that we're uh, uh, adding definitions of exactly what latitude and longitude are. They're actually written in reverse if you talk about an XY uh, cardinal type system. It's actually Y as our latitude and then X is our longitude. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna repeat myself a couple of times as we try to reinforce this topic. Okay. When pronounced lat and lawn, it's actually measured as y over x. Not confusing, just keeping with the vocabulary and the measurements of how this all works. So right out of the bat, our next slide, I'm going to give us a quick refresher of the uh, world geodetic system and how exactly latitude and longitudes work. Okay. Uh, I've got some interesting stuff going on here. Okay, that's not important. Um, right out of the bat, we have the uh, uh, Michigan counties. Uh, map data uh, using our county and then Michigan as the state. Uh, we're passing that to uh, select the longitude as long and the latitude, and then we're going to subgroup those or uh, add an ID for subregion. To uh, run this particular code, we're going to have the um, data set or the data frame MI countries, uh, counties, excuse me, MI counties. Um, what I would like to highlight in this particular section are four different columns of information. First, we have our longitude values, and they're going to be in negative. Uh, our latitude values, which are going to be in positive. The group IDs, and then finally the ID itself. Excuse me. Let me rephrase that. It's not group ID. It's just group. And then ID itself. So the latitude is going to be all of those vertices as a measured by horizontal path or rows. So if I were to look at my... Uh, data set and review what I'm talking here, uh, each of our latitude values are going to be in the Y coordinate system. In the longitude, longitudinal values, we're going to say that these are measured in vertical paths or columns. Again, this is why I'm going to reinforce this because even my text here sounds like I'm confusing the two. But in truth, when we start to use a latitude, we're going to climb a ladder, right, uh, the rungs of a ladder, uh, versus a longitudinal going from pole to pole, and then as it uh, slices up the uh, earth itself. Okay. So the latitude and longitude, the group ID is a unique identifier for contiguous areas within a region, and then ID is going to be the name of the region. I was trying my best to paint this out, uh, giving a legend of the counties themselves. Um, I've already closed that tab down. It's not important, but um, I wasn't able to add the label directly to the aesthetic or to the GG plot itself. Um, so with my errors, I just went ahead and canceled it and just went with the book. But this first one is using a geome point. Now we've used this geome in the past uh, by plotting our XY coordinate system. You can see that we start to create some boundary lines or the actual state of Michigan. And then by placing the coordinate quick map, uh, that's what renders this in a XY coordinate system, keeping the latitude and longitudes within a uh, square and so that they're the, the even dimensions. So we don't have any skewing uh, stretching going on with our image. Any questions on the geom point plot? Okay, we're good there. The next is going to change and now we're going to use the geom polygon feature instead. Now what's different is that the same data set as the MI counties, we're using the aesthetics of longitude being our y-axis, latitude being our x-axis, and then grouping using the group variable. Again, if you remember that grouping was just uh, a contiguous set of data. That's what actually is going to create our, our lines of, of counties. By calling on the geom polygon and then filling it with white and the color is gray is 50, that's gonna give us our kind of offset um, I was making a joke earlier uh, about uh, 
having gray on gray on gray, everything kind of washes out. Uh, so there isn't much going on with this map other than the fact that you can see the county uh, lines drawn for the state of Michigan. Okay. All right, let's start using some uh, more important information, this, uh, this new uh, special, excuse me, simple features package. Um, I put a note here, I said the ID and the county is the county name. I wanted to uh, be fancy and add a label with the label equals ID. Um, all tries that I attempted created errors, um, asking a rhetorical question to the entire team. Does anybody want to take a stab at maybe how that uh, would look? I can go to R real quick and try to type this in if anybody would want to uh, give that a shot. Okay, you'd like to see the error. So let's give this a shot real quick. Um, all right, I'm gonna scroll to the top here. And so obviously with our particular uh, data set, um, I wanted to use the ID variable as the label for each county. And what I was attempting to do is at least put some textual media there. Um, again, I can go to uh, Google Earth and do a county map of Michigan real quick if, if anybody is curious. Um, when I draw this label, the way I was putting it in there was inside this polygon variable. So we've got our fill white color gray 50. This is where I was putting the, the label. And I don't know if this is accurate, but I put label equals ID. Yeah, I think that's the issue. Um, okay. You're not mapping the... Okay. It's not mapped to an aesthetic. Okay. So I think if you if you put that in like the yeah the main aesthetic call and you say label equals ID, you should be that should work. It, it might work? be jumbled because there's so many counties, but um, right. But yeah, let's see and maybe you'll okay. get an error. Maybe you won't. Let's give that a run real quick. No, no, that didn't work either. Um, there's an R, no, this one didn't do it. Um, oh, was asking nice, for the June. yeah. Uh, I think you have to add a geom label layer. Okay, good point. Let's, if, uh, if we're not wasting time, um, let's give that a shot real quick. Do you think, June, it would be right after the uh, first initial call before geom polygon? I don't think it matters which, which one, okay. as long as you provide the um the aesthetic map call so now if you do okay. if AES. you put that inside an aes call yeah okay. equals id and then add a plus at the end make sure that i'm passing oh i think june's I right i think you might have to add it after okay. it polygon would um yeah render first be layered on top yeah okay let's check that Control e June may have solved my problem uh, last night. I was uh, I was trying different ways of going about this without Googling it, and every attempt I was making did not like to be nice. June, I think you've got something. At least it's taken a long time to render. Outstanding, that worked. Uh, no, it's in French. No, it's not. Presque Isle, Schoolcraft, Ontonagon. Uh, I think it's probably painting every single instance of it. Uh, so they're stacking on top of each other maybe. Because we have those contiguous units. If I go back to the data frame real quick, sorry. Yeah, I think if you had like another data frame with, I don't know, the center of the county or something and then map yeah. that. There's a reference to centroids in, uh, in the uh, simple features. It talks about that. Uh, being able to, to label it in that way. But, uh, at least June was able to produce something. So that's more than I got last uh, uh, this morning, uh, for sure. Okay, great job. Uh, okay. uh, in this plot, the coordinate quick map is used to adjust the axes to ensure lo longitudinal and latitude uh, are rendered on the same scale. That's the reference I was making. Uh, that we get a, a square box, otherwise it would uh, skew one direction or the other. For a more advanced use of ggplot for mapping, uh, we'll see the geome uh, simple features 
and the coordinate simple features to handle spatial data uh, spec specified in simple features format. This is where things really start to uh, connect. All right, next. All right. Um, I wanted to render a base map and talk about uh, longitude and latitude real quick uh, as a coordinate system uh, or a, is it cardinal? Um, Cartesian, cardinal, Cartesian. I get that term mixed up, but it's the XY coordinate system, the grid, uh, if we were to, to unfold the map and put it on a 2D uh, resolution. You can use these uh, above examples, but not in a, uh, but in a real world, they're not overly practical. Most GIS data is written in a simple features format and produced by the World Geospatial Consortium. There is a link that is active. You can go research more about the consortium if you'd like. In particular, the simple features package was written by Edgar uh, Pabesma. And before we start, let's refresh on coordinates. That takes him to his blog or to his GitHub page, I believe. But it, uh, it's that sim uh, simple features package. Um, I wanted to render using Tidyverse and ggplot, uh, incorporating a world map, and then uh, using the map data from Tidyverse. Um, we are producing a geo map using the data world. Uh, the map is world and the aesthetics are longitude is Y factor, latitude is X factor, and then the map ID is region. What I wanted to highlight, or it doesn't quite do what I want it to do, uh, but I make a reference to the equator and the Y axis being positive 90 degrees would be north of the equator, negative 90 degrees would be below the equator. Okay, and then lat uh, uh, longitude x-axis uh, starts at the prime meridian and then goes positive and negative depending on if you're going east or west from that prime meridian. Okay. So negative numbers are going to be towards the west, positive numbers are going to be towards the east. And then it literally rolls all the way back around. You get to uh, 180 degrees off uh, and then it takes you back to the original point again. Okay. So latitude is y-axis, longitude is... Oh, did I mess that up? Latin lawn, no, latitude supposed to be, yeah. Latitude is y-axis, longitude is x-axis. Um, and measured in 90 degrees uh, from the equator, uh, x-axis is 180 degrees from the prime meridian uh, to negative 180 degrees, depending on if you're going east or west. To exercise the geo special features and coordinate special, simple features and coordinate simple features functions, we will use the OZ maps package developed by my, uh, Michael Schumer. Sumner, Michael Sumner. Um, so we call out the OZ maps and then we call out uh, simple features packages. And then we create a data frame called OZ states. We are populating with OZ maps and then OZ map states. And then we're printing OZ states. What is unique about this particular GIS data set is we are looking at the Australia map. Um, I, believe that this is relevant to Mr. Hadley Wickham being the author of this book and being from New Zealand, um, fairly close between New Zealand and Australia. Uh, don't confuse the two countries, uh, you will get hurt. Um, I've got a couple of New Zealanders that I work with and uh, if you make Australian comments to them, they will uh, very much uh, fight you for that. I'm making a joke. The, um, as we plot, or excuse me, as we present this information to the screen, there's a couple of things that I want to highlight. The first is the geometry type. In this case, it's a multi-polygon. We're gonna see that term coming out multiple times within this text. The dimension is gonna be an X, Y coordinate system. So again, that's just a 2D plane. If you were to receive a GIS map that does have a Z coordinate system, so you would have X, Y, and Z, that would be altitude. And you're gonna to start to render a 3D map. We've already talked about ggplot as a feature uh, and the use of certain um, 2D services and ways in which we can do 3D. Uh, that, was, uh, that was the end of our chapter five at the, at the close of last week. The boundary box, this is kind of a neat system to take into account. And this is gonna be why I'm gonna flip over to Chrome here in a moment or Google Maps, excuse me. Uh, we have our minimum and maximum X coordinate system, and then our Y minimum and our Y max. This is generated by using the geo, geocentric de, uh, datum Australia 1984. The min max values are going to 
be like this, okay? And so I wanted to show how we were setting up these boundary boxes, okay? Uh, this is Google Earth. I zoomed into Australia. I added the longitudinal and latitudinal lines uh, to the globe uh, to give us those measurements of positives and negatives uh, north and south. Okay. The Tropic of Capricorn um, as a line below the equator does have a value. I don't remember it off the top of my head. I want to say it's negative 65, but don't quote me on that. I, uh, I may be uh, incorrect because that number doesn't match. Maybe it's negative 25. Uh, 23.5. Thank you, Sram. Okay, let's get out of Google Earth. Okay, in this next paragraph, the author is having us note the fact that it's nine rows of information and then two columns of data. So we can see that the, the rows we have are the named geometry, uh, the character is multi-polygon in, in uh, degrees, and then each of the named states within Australia. There is a ninth entry called Other Territories. We're going to find, we're going to remove that here in a moment. As we look at the columnar data, we have our name and our geometry. And we're going to make a, a reference to that uh, in a moment. The geometry is going to be uh, kind of an auto system within the uh, simple features package. Um, it will automatically look for this uh, if you don't explicitly tell it to render. I'll get to that in a moment. I also made a comment to the class S3. Um, this is a particular class type within uh, R or the, the way it manages this information. Okay. So to render the map, we just call out ggplot oz states, and then we add the geom simple features, and then we pass that to the coordinates uh, simple features. What that does is render our nine different states and territories within Australia. Again, given the uh, boundary box or the minimum and maximum values within this data. Uh, I wanted to show one more link. Give me a second. Pass over here real quick. These are actually the boundary boxes set with this data set. So this is EPGS 4283. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. I don't remember exactly what the acronym is off the top of my head, uh, but I do have it explicitly stated later in our text. The GDA 1984 uh, is what produces our uh, square around Australia and its territories. All right, going back. Anyone feel welcome to interrupt me as I go through this media. Um, I want anybody to ask questions or, or comment as needed. All right. Note, these have to be uh, ran together. Um, the two different geomes, uh, uh, geome simple features and then coordinate simple features, you have to run these together. Um, if you don't, one of them will give you the error, the other one just spits out uh, the uh, plotted points. Uh, so I, I'm only making a comment to myself the next time I do this, I wanna make sure that we render both at the same time. Uh, the reason this works is the geomes uh, simple features relies on the geometry aesthetic. This can be uh, applied in three different ways. The first one is then is nothing past. I, as the author developing this, copying and pasting from the uh, uh, source of the book, uh, rendering this script does not contain any direct relation to a geom, or sorry, to a geometry cell, uh, these uh, uh, boundaries of vector content. So therefore, the system will automatically look for a column labeled geometry, right? The second is if the data argument uh, is not is a simple features object, then the geom SF, uh, geom's simple features, can automatically detect the geometry even if it isn't labeled geometry. And I, I took exception to this one statement because I do work with multiple data sources, and if the content or the system that generated this data set uh, doesn't automatically label the column as geometry. Um, if you were to uh, not call it out, the system would automatically try to, to uh, associate itself to those, uh, that column of information, that variable itself. And then the last one, you can specify the mapping manually uh, in the usual way with an aesthetic geometry equals my column. Here, we're actually explicitly telling the system, here's where the information is for our geometry. 
Um, I don't want to get too far off the beaten path here. Uh, just remember that polygons and multi polygons uh, are in a pseudo vector form where you're drawing the lines between one point to another. Okay. Um, they are quite large, especially when you start to map uh, different uh, territories or, or, or the boundaries between different states or, or uh, territories. Yeah. All right. Lastly, the coordinate simple features function governs the map projection, which actually compiles everything and then makes a visual representation output. As I move into this next uh, topic, I just wanted to, uh, it would be correct data to have multiple ge geometries in the same record. That would be correct, SRAM. Uh, feel welcome to uh, jump in and expand on that topic if you would like. The, uh, yeah, you don't, wanna, you don't want to separate any of that uh, media within its geometry variable. Uh, the, the simple features uh, is looking for that in that more ordinal type uh, system of data points. Um, if you were to break those apart and put them in different columns, it would definitely give you error for sure. Um, before I move to layered maps, I just wanted to uh, make a statement. So when I initially read the mapping feature or jumped ahead and said I would do this chapter, uh, one of the things I was looking forward to was like Google Maps, uh, Leaflet, ArcGIS, like some kind of an engine that I'm painting on top of. Um, I found throughout the entire chapter that wasn't happening. However, the wealth of information that I did learn by reading and, and using these exercises was uh, very much value added. I was having a preconceived notion of what I was going to be um, incurring with, with taking on this chapter, and that was not, definitely not what I expected. Okay. Um, when we get into layered maps, here we're going to start stacking information on top of itself. Right. Well, you can have any number of layers representing certain media points. Okay. And we're going to expand this into the raster mapping here in a moment. So to do this, we're going to call on the, the RMAP shaper package. Uh, there are times where you want to layer maps on top of one another. ggplot2 supports this, um, allowing you to have any multiple layers of geome uh, simple features. To see how this works, we first use dplyr and the filter option to remove the other territories. So we're kind of like stripping it away. Right? We don't want that extra media. We just want to focus on the uh, uh, primary states. The code below draws a plot with two map layers, the first being the OZ states. So that's the boundaries of each of the states of Australia. And then we fill in the states with different colors. We also add OZ votes, uh, which draws the electoral boundaries. Uh, if I'm misinterpreting the word electoral, please correct me, anybody especially. SRAM, go ahead if you'd like. Okay, never mind. Um, the, uh, the time in which uh, the original data is OZ maps and then ABS CED. Um, I couldn't find this directly just in my brief time of, of uh, writing this. Uh, I wanted to expand and uh, hear a little bit more from other users' experiences or if they know more about the sim uh, simple features package, what ABS CED stands for. Um, we're going to see some extensions with other uses of this same form, not this term. But it's stored at a higher resolution than the plot requires in order to reduce the time taken to render the plot. So some of these maps are very, very, very large. And by using the uh, MS Simplify and the uh, RS Map Shaper, uh, it's kind of like we uh, what's the word? Uh, reduce the data points within the map to allow it a faster um, rendering of the map. Okay. Let's do this real quick. Uh, the first entry is we're going to call on OZ states uh, from the OZ Map states. And then we're going to pass it to the filter by name, not including other territories. Okay, so all we're doing is just uh, saying use this and then strip away and put it back into OZ states. The second is going to be OZ votes, and that's going to be from the RMAP shaper, uh, simplify, MS simplify, and then we're looking at the ABS CED, um, reducing the overall uh, points within it. Now that we have two data sets, OZ states and OZ votes, to represent the state boundaries and electoral uh, borders, respectfully, the desired plot can be constructed by adding two geome, uh, uh, two layers 
of geom simple features uh, to plot this. So we have our ggplot call uh, passing two layers geom uh, simple features data equals oz states uh, using the mapping aesthetic of fill equals the name and then show legend is true. I changed this from what was in the text team. So this in the uh, code snippet from the book, it actually has it set as false. Uh, I always find that if you add the, uh, the name being not familiar with Australia as I should be, um, I wanted to see the names of the states as the color representation. And then finally, the second layer uh, of simple features was OZ votes, and that is fill equals NA. And then we use the coordinate simple features to construct our map. And here we can see that each of these various areas representing the colors uh, by putting the label as true, um, we can see that we have the Capital Territory, uh, New South Wales, Northern Territory. Is anybody from our group been to Australia or uh, uh, actually lives in Australia? I haven't had the opportunity to visit the country yet. I'm really looking forward to it. It's on my bucket list. Uh, the company I work with has a has a, uh, a agency, and then we do rail mining uh, going into the to the uh, inland side of Australia. Um, it's iron ore mining, and so I've always wanted to uh, have the opportunity to go go there if, if given the chance. All right, it is worth noting that the first layer to the plot maps the file uh, fill aesthetic. Uh, onto a variable in the data. In this instance, the name variable is a categorical variable. It's the name of the states and then does not convey any additional information, but the same approach can be used to visualize other kinds of uh, area metadata. What the author is stating in this fact is that if you have more information or even more data sets, you can add another simple features layer and then call on additional services. Um, not in this particular book club, but over Saturday, the uh, R4DS book club was talking about joining uh, data sets. And uh, I thought that would be a good segue into if we had multiple services, join them together on a key and then render it uh, back out on the map again. Just an idea. You can keep the two separate as well. All right. Um, labeled maps, I think I misspelled that word. Adding labels to maps provides a clearer understanding of presentation. This is supported by the Geome Simple Features label option and the Geome Simple Features text. Uh, June, now that we are looking at this, I think I tried both of these on that previous example and it wasn't uh, rendering properly. Um, I actually copied this uh, label call and was trying to call this uh, label ID and uh, it wasn't liking what I was giving it. But the next point is we're creating a Sydney map from the OZ maps, ABS, CED, uh, passing it to a filter in by name. So we're rendering Sydney, Wentworth, uh, Oranga, uh, Kingsford Smith, Grand Lyric, et cetera. And then to plot this, we're gonna use the ggplot Sydney map, the data set we just created. Um, we're adding the simple features with fill name, show legend is false. So in this instance, I turned that off. The coordinate simple features, we're using a limited, or sorry, X limit uh, and Y limit. That's gonna zoom us into a section within the map itself. And then the geome simple feature label is gonna be the label name. And then the padding is by unit, uh, the unit one and then in millimeters. Uh, Stan, I think this was your comment about the potential centroid or, or central center point. Sorry, I zoned out there for a second. Um, That's okay. Yeah, I think this was what I, I was kind of referring to. Yeah. Oh, uh, Lydia commented, thank you, that I feel better that I didn't misspell it. Um, and then uh, June says, uh, maybe the SF label and SF text layers uh, also need to take a geometry aesthetic. That's a good point. Uh, that would be a possibility uh, with our particular units of padding. Is that your reference, June? Um, giving us that place, I guess, on the map, the uh, coordinate uh, of, of where we want that label to be placed on the map. 
Uh, there is a warning with this particular output uh, that uh, the author wants to take exception to, and it has to do uh, with your, your uh, resolution of the map. And it, 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 it does do its best to try and label, but if you're not explicitly calling on it, um, this warning does come up. Uh, let me get past this point and then I'll show you what that warning states. But here we can see that inside a particular region, I think this was of Sydney, I'm pretty sure, uh, what the uh, author was commenting on, uh, we're going in and uh, trying to separate it even further. The warning message is worth noting internally geom sf label uses the function of sf point on surface from the simple features package to place labels and the warning message occurs because most algorithms used by simple features to compute geometric quantities both centroids and internal po interior points are based on an assumption that the points lie in or on a flat two-dimensional surface and are parameterized with the cartesian x and y coordinate system for this reason, the SF package produces warning messages when it relies on this approximation. Uh, I did not feel the need of paraphrasing or, or trying to negate the importance of that comment. It's okay to get a warning when you use this particular geom uh, label. All right, we're gonna add some additional labels here or add additional geoms. Um, is this the, no. Uh, here's an area where I was trying to call on the capital cities of each state. Um, I wanted to, to use the uh, city column and June, since you showed me the previous, I'm going to try this again um, at a later point. I think I might be able to get it to work properly. Thank you for uh, guiding me in that statement. Uh, the section states that the geom S uh, simple features acts similar to other geom plots. Therefore, we can add additional layers as many as required doesn't matter uh, how much data we, we want to paint on the screen, just keep adding these different layers and they'll stack on top of each other. Uh, this conveys the message to our graphic object. The next code snippet will add geom point to add capitals of each uh, state. So we have a data frame called OZ capitals. Um, it is a tibble uh, or tribble, I guess. And there's a city latitude and longitude for each of the coordinate systems. Using the ggplot package, we're going to call geom simple features uh, using the data as OZ voters, uh, votes, and then geom simple features uh, for data OZ states using the color black, and then the fill is NA. Uh, Frederica, if you don't mind me putting you on the spot for a moment, in another uh, call we were talking about using uh, a particular color sequence. Do you mind if I interrupt you or, or uh, put you on the spot? Do you remember what that package was? It was a it was a color selector. Uh, that was a Viridis. Um, I, I don't Viridis know how to package. Yeah, I know you you spent uh, quite a bit of time talking on that subject. Uh, I just uh, written down in the in the chat. Uh, it's a Viridis package that you use usually for uh, scale color or scale, of, or scale fill okay. uh, Viridis. And you do like scale color Viridis um, as a function or okay. scale uh, fill Viridis. And it's a nice scale. There's different type of colors. It's just loading as a package. Awesome. And, and within that package, it just auto selects uh, the color uh, attributes, right? Or the combination of what is displayed. So if we were to use this on the, uh, the uh, call of fill and then make a reference to that later. Uh, there's, yeah, th there are a few different combinations that you can choose, but the basic one is um, you can even just use the basic. But inside the function, you can uh, specify different uh, combinations. Okay. Um, a couple of years ago, three years ago, I was reading an article about a, uh, I want to say it was a business in Seattle, Oregon, or California, Northern California. But they were doing a uh, study on uh, tree rings, uh, the age of trees uh, when they are cut down and then it, it, it scales uh, based on a time set of the distance between each ring. And the 
use was in relation to a history plot and the entire application was built using ggplot and i want to say it was a shiny app because it was there was some interactivity with it too um, but when i when i go back and i think about different ways of color coding or or, or trying to to uh, scale some kind of a, a layering process uh, giving a visual to a reader um, you know, a picture speaks a thousand words. And so being able to convey that information within this uh, graphical object that we're generating, uh, I find value in. So just adding that in. Um, we finally use a geom point. And in this particular layer, um, what we're doing is just using the OZ capitals with the coordinate system. Okay, so the X is the longitude, the Y is the latitude, and then the color is red. So what ends up painting is just the location of each of the capitals. Um, again, what I was going to try to do, uh, be fancy with this, was add labels to each of the capitals. Um, June, I'll follow your instructions and see if I can get that to, to uh, mess around with later on. Right. Um, additionally, if the OZ Capitals data set has the number of electorates for each capital, we can add another geom point uh, as a size aesthetic. So depending on the uh, number of individuals that are voting for that particular state, um, you can rise or lower, you know, uh, increase or decrease uh, the point set of that capital, giving another visual representation of the uh, scale. Right. Next slide is going to be map projections. Um, I'm looking at the clock right now and we got about 14 minutes left before we call it a day. Um, what I'm trying to avoid is this uh, master uh, raster maps. Um, this particular section is not complete. Um, again, it was due to a particular boomerang uh, reference that wasn't working. I got it to uh, generate early this morning when I came back down to the office, uh, but did not produce the rest of the slide deck for that section. Uh, in map projections, what we're looking at is some additional details that are contained within each of our uh, simple features G, uh, GIS data set. Now, this is where things get really fun. Uh, I, I found this particular chapter the most rewarding uh, with relation of, I didn't know that. That's really kind of cool. Let's you know expand some theory on, on that subject. Okay. Up to this point, we have assumed that latitude and longitude is precise. In reality, the earth is anything but precise. Uh, we have a whole different bunches of, of uh, craters and, and, and sea levels and uh, mountains and magnetic anomalies, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the lunar effect of, of uh, tidal flow, uh, the rotation of the Earth and centrifugal force. Um, there are a number of factors that must be considered when plotting data. The following are only a few examples. Um, how ellipsoid is the Earth? Well, what is ellipsoid? Well, it just means spherical. The Earth is actually more kind of an egg shape. Um, when you talk, take into account centrifugal force of spinning at 17,000 miles an hour, right? That's the rotation of the Earth. It's gonna have a, a pull on the, uh, on the uh, molten magma in the crust of the Earth. And then you add lunar effects to it and it actually kind of pulls these layers uh, ever so slightly. Uh, where is the center of the planet? Surprisingly, it may not be where you think it is, right? The center of the planet isn't always the center. Uh, it is all dependent. Uh, where is the origin point for lat uh, longitude and latitude? Uh, I didn't add any notes to that one. I uh, use it for equator and prime meridian. Where is the sea level? Um, depending on lunar or tidal forces, uh, we must accommodate for this if we want to know the exact sea level, okay? And then how do the uh, tectonic plates move? This one I, I copied from the text, but I didn't quite understand what they were getting at, other than the fact of um, uh, how our, our uh, plates, uh, the tectonic plates, uh, we increase, I, I don't remember those terms, where um, it converges together and they fold in on each other, um, or it's molten magma and they're expanding out, kind of like a conveyor belt. Um, are there magnetic anomalies to account for? How close to the surface is the molten magma? Right, um, a classic example of that is the Bermuda Triangle. Um, if you were to have a look at a magnetic map of the Earth, you will notice that there is a high degree of magnetic disruption in um, the consideration of the Bermuda Triangle. I don't wanna get off on a tangent, just know that that's one of the theories of why uh, things are happening in flight and in, in shipping. 
These questions produce assumptions called the geodetic datum. If you are concerned with North America, you can use the NAD um, 83, which is uh, North America datum uh, 1983. Uh, if you're concerned with uh, for global precision, we can use the World Geodetic System of 1984. What is what are these terms? What do they mean? Uh, both links are active. Uh, I didn't intend on going down this rabbit hole, but I just wanted to uh, give you an idea of how awesome this really is. While drawing maps uh, of an ellipsoid on a 2D plane, some levels of distortion must be accepted. This is called the map projection. Projections are often classified in terms of the geometric, geometric properties uh, that they preserve. So you either have an area preserving map, uh, which ensures, ensures that the regions of equal area on the globe are drawn with equal area on the map. The other option would be shape preserving. Uh, this is called conformal and projections ensure that the local shape of regions are preserved. Okay. Again, you're taking a, a globe and then you're trying to, to peel it back out and put it on a 2D map. Okay. Um, the note from the, the author states, you cannot have both area preserving and shape preserving. It's actually impossible. Um, you actually choose one or the other depending on what you're trying to represent. For more on this topic, please see the geo com computation within R. Um, that link will take us to the package and we get uh, to see more um, information on how it's actually generated. When all this map choices are made and considered, we are left with a coordinate reference system or CRS. A complete set of assumptions used to translate the latitude and longitude information into a two dimensional map. So we call out uh, STCRS, uh, and then use the OZ votes as an option. What is generated is going to be the EPGS 4283. Um, and again, that's where this link comes from, by the way, uh, this EPGS 14, 4283. Um, if I were to go back up one level to the EPSG.io, um, this is a fairly large data set that you're searching. Um, and I didn't, uh, I wasn't pulling in the right search criteria. So it took me a little bit of bit Sorry, it took me some time to get to the GDA 1994. Uh, uh, um, so geocentric uh, datum of Australia 1984. Um, the ellipsoids are GIS 1980. Um, here is the coordinate systems. The length of unit is in meter, uh, and then the, the measurement is of one meter. Uh, primer, prime meridian is Greenwich, uh, uh, meaning zero. Des, uh, zero degrees, and then angle unit, um, the ellipsoidal uh, CS value. Um, I'm going to keep moving. Axis is geodetic latitude uh, or north order is one unit. Um, angle of degree uh, is uh, that value. And then the axis of the longitude is east order number two angle unit. I know I'm just repeating myself by reading this particular output of what the ST cars and then the contained media inside uh, OZ votes. Um, give me one second. Mike uh, passed up said, David Robinson uses scale fill. Oh, okay. You were making a uh, reference to Frederick Gus, uh, Veritas uh, comment. Um, I found this very interesting, not because I want to uh, expand the rest of our time, but the use of which this is written. Um, if you go to the site and you go to that GDA 1984, 1994, um, if I were to pull open this datum, I think this will work. If not, I'll go backwards. Yeah, don't worry about the ads. Yeah, I can't get rid of that. Okay, never mind. Let's stay there. Um, there was a point where you could export this in multiple media types. There was a JSON value, there was an XML value. Um, what I was making a comment on is currently we're viewing the WKT form of this information. Um, when you're in this world of, of more uh, data munging or, or kind of discovery uh, of your information, it's always a good idea to know the format in which our media was generated. Uh, this just happens to be the well-known text format. The data is used internally by the uh, simple features package. However, there are alternative methods such as EPG, EPSG code, and this is a numeric representation of the same data. Um, this one 
didn't do anything for me other than just reply true. I assume that that means we're looking at the uh, uh, CRS o uh, OZ votes and then comparing it with the same version of 4283 and it replied as true. They are equal. Um, does anybody want to expand on that logical statement? All right, I'll keep moving on. Go ahead. The only thing I notice is, um, so this is still the Australia one, because it, it says the EPSG 4283. Yes. I'm guessing that, yeah, that's all I see as far as quick connection. Well, let's, let's go to this link real quick, Lydia, um, because there is a, should work. Yeah, let's just take me to the site. This is what I was referring to. Um, if I do EPGS, um, and then say 4283. This, this did not take me where I thought it would, um, this particular search. So the first thing that I notice is that it kind of hangs, but the only thing that you see in your browser is that something is working. Um, I am making a, a, was it get pull, like a, like a call HTML call to the data set. And this is gonna take a bit. Uh, when I ran this, uh, it gave me like uh, 12,000 hits. And then I was scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling forever until I found it. Um, this is a good website though. And if you do want to know more about what you're dealing with, um, you can use this feature and go in and, and change your format of media that you're searching for. Yeah, this didn't like the way I, I tried my search call, but the link is active. Um, it is in the book. It will take you to that EPGS site and then you can go from there and uh, find that data set. You can change the format in which you're downloading it or, or using it. Uh, to save time for searching uh, the EPGS website, misspelled word, this link will uh, take us to EPGS 4283, uh, which is the GDA 1984. And that's the uh, particular page that I have open here. I just kind of shortcut it a bit. Go ahead, Priyanka. Sorry, that wasn't meant to be. No worries, you're okay. Um, Let's see, in ggplot2, the CRS is controlled, and I tried to spell that out, coordinate reference system, um, by the cord uh, simple features package uh, or call function, which ensures that every layer in the plot uses the same projection. By default, cord SF uses the coordinate reference system associated with the geometry column of the data. And I made a reference earlier at the beginning of our presentation where I was talking about uh, vector graphics and having a, a polygon, these different points and connecting the dots. Okay. Um, with Priyanka's comment, um, it is 1.28 in the afternoon uh, or, or central time anyway. Um, does anybody have any comments? Is this been rewarding thus far? Um, I'm only about halfway through, but I don't wanna continue dragging into another week as well. Um, what are your thoughts from the group? Uh, you, you did very good. So I think we, uh, we should do everything because I, it's very important, this, uh, this chapter. Yes. Frederick, have you, have you done any mapping in your past experience with any of your data sets? Yes, I've done some some of them, uh, but um, anytime I found um, just the, those little things that I didn't expect it, so it's very interesting to me, and uh, it's fun because I keep for, forgetting how to do it. So good point. <laughs> so anytime I need to search back the things because I I've done some of them and. Yeah. I've touched many different uh, ways to do them. So uh, it's very interesting to me. So, and I've already discovered a few things that I didn't know. <laughs> those, those users of our uh, book club in, the, in your data field or, or your, your uh, data science field, um, do you commonly use mapping as a feature of, of presenting media? Um, again, I, I know Gustavo's not with us and neither is Kent, but um, does anybody else use this on a daily basis? Yeah, I use it almost every day. You do? Okay. 
Um, but not particularly in R. Oh, okay. Uh, what, it's only what, when I have to automate things, then I come to R. Good point. Do you mind me asking or, or divulging what tool you are using to render geospatial data with? Don't feel uh, obligated mostly to Mostly SV ArcGIS. Okay. And sometimes for licensing issues, I have to use QGIS. Good point. Um, I solve the problem there and just automate the plots with uh, R. Yes, yes. Our uh, our business uses ArcGIS quite often. And so um, that's another one of those weird licensing kind of things. Um, mm -hmm. I sound like I know a lot about geospatial data. Um, I only do it from a mathematical standpoint or just uh, enjoy the nerd factor of it. But uh, I would like to spend more time in this field for sure. Yeah, the only comment just to make a comment would be this lat long thing is just half of the business because mostly you would also have a metric format when you are dealing with distances you have to go back to the metric system so, uh have you found that some services do use a a inches feet mostly process, meters, or? kilometers miles and so to, to, it's just a transposing, right? You're taking in one form and then transposing it back into the metric system before yes. plotting, okay. Even the, the, the datums are in metric system. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, that's mostly a, all for the mobility and transportation issues you would yeah. choose to. I can see where that would be a, a real conundrum with, with plotting, um, it definitely wouldn't scale properly uh, or it, it won't, it won't show properly. Yeah. All right. Um, Priyanka, if, if it's okay with the team, uh, we're one minute over our time. Um, is it appropriate if I go over the re remaining part of this media to, uh, next week? Of course. <laughs> Uh, feel welcome to post any questions in Slack. Um, again, I'm, I'm not what I would consider an expert at this, but I would love to take a stab at any questions that the staff may have or the team may have and uh, use it as a learning opportunity to expand into other areas I may not have considered. So. All right. Okay, team. Uh, Priyanka, I'll get a uh, poll notification for this uh, content and uh, try not to make a, uh, a mess of our repository again. Uh, I do wanna apologize mm -hmm. to the whole group about that subject. Thank you, Lydia, for finding that error. Oh, no worries, yeah. Yeah, no, I was actually, I hadn't even realized there was an error. It was just, um, I was just trying to make sure I could pull myself um, or push myself to the main. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, right. I'm glad <laughs> you and you and John figured it out. Yes, <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely. So, all right. Well, thank you for your time, team. Thank you for your patience. And uh, I will pick up from this uh, point uh, starting Monday next week. All right. Thank you so much, Ryan. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Ryan. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, too.